Yeah, no, <laughs> to be honest, like it was such a fine to find you guys and to know that you were, you know, even FODMAP friendly as well, because that adds a real, another layer of complexity. So it was really good that, um, yeah, I love your product. It's so cool. Hi everybody, uh, welcome. We're speaking with Gluten Free on the Go. This is Rachel McCulloch uh, and she is an iron, iron woman as well as being someone who struggles with celiac disease. So uh, she's been a long time uh, uh, lover of clean lean protein and new zest products. And so uh, we just thought we'd talk to her a little bit about uh, how that is and how she how she got into Iron Man. So, um, so Rachel, welcome. Uh, yeah. What? Uh, how? Like, can I? Can we ask about your story? Can we ask about like uh, how you found out that you were celiac? Sure, sure. Hey. So um, yeah, it was actually a really long journey. Um, I actually grew up overseas. Um, my parents, my dad was into um, third world. He was, we we're in the third world, and he was into um, development and and. Um, so we traveled a lot. So part of my picture, my health picture was that when I reported um, like stomach symptoms and that kind of thing to my doctors over the years from when I was a child, it was often assumed that it was some bug that I picked up and like we lived in the Philippines and in Papua New Guinea and different places. So um, I just, I guess I grew up with sore tummies and I just sort of put it down to that. And so when I started running, um, it, it was just normal for me. So I decided to do a marathon and um, and it was the training actually of the marathon that exacerbated it and made me really determined to try and figure out what was going on with my health because I'd be running and I'd have a sore tummy. And um, so I, yeah, I just persisted. And there was a, a doctor, a new doctor who came in and he did a full test and I was, um, yeah, so it showed up to be really, uh, really positive. <laughs> And um, my numbers were through the roof. So um, it was an easy fix, but I, I had to completely change my lifestyle. And I really didn't know how to do that. Um, I didn't really, I had to learn all about gluten and what it was and how to eliminate that from my diet. And actually within two weeks, I, um, I noticed a huge difference. Um, yeah, so that is really running that saved me <laughs> from, from um, a lot of, and like normal everyday, well, what was normal for me, everyday pain and sort of bloatedness and just a lot of other gastro symptoms. Um, so I'm quite grateful for running and exercise. And so as well as the mental health benefits, it also gave me my life back in a way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so wow. Can you yeah. Uh, talk, talk us through like what were kind of some of the maybe problems or symptoms and then like, um, how how you had to change your diet right so um for me i just had a general sense of being very aware of my stomach it was always sort of bloated and sore and often i'd feel i'd eat and i'd feel nauseous and i'd have to sort of breathe myself through so I, you know i wouldn't actually be sick and i i you know my health records when it going back um, I'd report to the doctors, oh yeah, still got stomach problems or you know diarrhea or whatever. I'd just go through waves of unhealth. And I think eventually I was just written off as some, you know, like and maybe it's psychosomatic or I was just a, a, a whingy person or, you know, um, it was anxiety or I don't know. And, and so I just, you know, it was just background and I just dealt with it. Um, so I would get a lot of kind of brain fog and tiredness and I didn't really realize that this wasn't normal yeah as well as the stomach issues yeah oh wow and then so um obviously uh being celiac you have to remove all gluten from your diet how did you kind of do that and how did you start to deal with yeah. that diagnosis yeah so with the it's really important if you think you have celiac disease to actually go to your GP and request a celiac serology. So I was officially diagnosed, you know, um, it's, a, it's a really big deal to, to eliminate a whole food group from your diet if you don't need to, um, because there are benefits, you know, gluten is a protein which does have some benefits for other people. But um, for me, it was getting my, um, going to a gastro, 
gastroenterologist and having a biopsy done of my, of my gut. And so that showed that I definitely needed to eliminate this poison, what was poison for me. Um, and so I had to learn what gluten was and, and you know, it's in everything. It's in, it's in soy sauce, it's in a lot of, you know, like mayonnaises, it's in Milo, um, basic stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, it was a real journey and I would be really overwhelmed at times. Um, uh, but um, once, you, once you figure it out and you read, you know, you just read the back of labels of everything. <laughs> you know, does it contain wheat? Does it contain gluten? And you find replacements. And, um, yeah, and it, it's definitely manageable. Mm. What, um, what was the biggest thing you missed or, like, what was the thing that you were, like, most upset about giving up? Um, well, croissants. <laughs> I didn't eat a lot of them, but I just loved croissants. And it's been eight years since I've had a proper croissant. <laughs> um, and, you know, pizza, pasta, they weren't a huge part of my life, although they were... I had had that mindset when I was training. That's what, you know, athletes need to be eating to fuel up with. Um, so I, yeah, I was really worried about how can I give that up? And, you know, oh, it's the gluten-free bread, thinking it's, you know, substandard and dry and and um, realising actually, because I, I bake, I make my own stuff and I, I try and eat, I like to know what's in my food. Um, I'm not hardcore you know, super clean, um, but I aspire to be most, you know, probably 80, 80%, you know, you know, healthy yeah. and high, you know, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, it's, it, it was a mission um, and I, yeah, I've, I've figured out ways around it. Yeah. Sure. What was the biggest challenges, kind of, would you get stuck at like three o'clock when you're out running somewhere or would, like, was there things yeah. that Hard. Yeah, it, yeah, it is hard, and um, I mean, I've learnt to, to be prepared. So, like, I just always sticks, you know, a, a bit of, you know, either a mandarin or, or a banana or um, a gluten-free muesli bar or something. So I've got something in my back pocket. But I often feel ripped off in events. Um, but it's quite cool that more and more events now are catering towards people with allergies and um, celiac disease. So, um, but contamination's a problem as well. So like I recently did the Torah half, which is amazing by the way. Um, but they had the smorgasbord of chippies and lollies and all that kind of thing. But everyone's been diving into them and it could have been cross contaminated and, and I just vomit like when I eat gluten, I'm really sick. So I just so I took the banana and I was like, they even had scones and tea and I was like, oh, I mean I may not have gone for it but I couldn't even it you know that the, the choice was taken away from me um yeah. so I do I do fight kind of resentment not at everyone else but just my own situation um but I'm generally you know eight years into it now I'm you know I, I just need to be prepared um and I'm just super grateful when organizers are aware of these things and provide safe food yeah yeah so do you still race today? Like, do you have any races coming up? Yes. Yep. I haven't registered yet, but I'm aiming for the um, uh, Topol half and then maybe the Tauranga half. Um, but I have actually registered for the full Ironman in 2023. So that's kind of, yeah, so I'm building up to that and I need these little races to kind of be little middle, little milestones to kind of keep me training and focused and, and yeah <laughs> what do you do for training because obviously it's like a huge stress on the body and a lot of people would use like carbs like pasta and stuff like the night before to train like before yeah. training how do you deal with um with your nutrition basically right yeah well um i try and keep um so for my training is pretty normal i usually have a, a smoothie, a protein shake, <laughs> using New Zest um, after my long rides and runs. Um, uh, and I, yeah, uh, but I, I try and keep low fiber um, probably the week before a race because I know my gut. And so I will do, you know, rice and fish the night before. So I'll use, I will carb to a certain point, but I don't over carb. I, I my stomach can't really handle that kind of 
um, yeah, sort mm. of high, high sugars and that kind of thing. And I've found that they're really helpful for me. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, another thing I have to, uh, that I have to add to the picture is I actually have microscopic colitis, which is due to the fact that I went 40 years undiagnosed with a celiac. And off, it's like about 10% of celiacs also have other conditions and microscopic colitis is, is yeah, part of that. So that's actually also something that triggers me. So I, I try and keep low, you know, low sugars and help, you know, clean sugars as well. Um, so yeah, low FODMAPs diet really helps me. And I, I'm very mindful of that, especially when I'm at peak training. Yeah. And like with like restricting your diet because you have to, are you worried about um, vitamin and mineral and those micronutrient kind of intake? Is that something that you're conscious about or? Yeah, I am. So I, I try and, you know, do the nuts and seeds things. Um, and I make my like nuts and seeds um, crackers and that kind of thing to fill it, fill out those, those big blocks of food that we, you know, food groups that we need. Um, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um, that's kind of all I wanted to talk about. Like, I kind of wanted to just, uh, one last thing is like, what motivates you to, to do like Ironmans and things like that and do that training? It seems like you've been doing them for a while. Yeah, well, actually, it was my husband who decided to do Ironman, and I told, told him he was crazy. <laughs> um, but uh, once we got, I mean, for me, it was like, well, I either join him in his training or else I'll, you know, be an Ironman widow. <laughs> and um, I get a lot of FOMO. So he's actually, like, he's been the athlete, and I've eventually joined him in it. Um, and so, but for me, I, I just love, I love kind of beating myself. I love the feel of like going out for a two hour run and knowing that this is me. Cause I don't, I just feel like I'm just Rachel, you know, just this, you know, 40 something year old mum. <laughs> and I don't, I actually don't feel like a runner. I don't feel like an iron man, iron woman, even though I've done one and I've, I've probably done six halves since, or seven halves since, I mean, half iron men races since 2019, but I, I just, I don't know. I just still feel like I'm faking it, but when I'm out out there, I just love doing it. There's just something in me that wants to push beyond the 10k, and and I have been amazed what I can do, and I think that, and I, I do get the runners high. Like I just come back just buzzing, and it, it's good for your mental health. And I just love knowing that. Um, I just yeah love knowing that I'm putting into my body something that I you know in terms of strengthening that my older self will be grateful 